The Costa de Malfi in the south of Italy is both wild and beautiful, framed by the Tyrrhenian Sea in the foothills of the Latari Mountains. As well as historic and picturesque towns. Sorrento marks the beginning of a journey along one of the most beautiful panoramic roads in the world, the Amalfitana. This small town is located in an expansive bay and extends on a cliff above the sea with turn-of-the-century villas and grand hotels. A number of Britons wealthy have recently discovered this place for themselves, a popular location at the southern end of the Gulf of Naples. Formerly a Greek settlement and birthplace of Toccato Tasso, Sorrento's secrets lie hidden in numerous cloisters, gardens and courtyards, and within the footsteps of European history. They all came here, Greeks, Romans, Normans, French and Spanish, to a place that since ancient times has been used for recreation. Most of the town's streets are typical of Roman city planning, and the San Francesco Cathedral is located on the site of an ancient forum. The attached cloister of the former Franciscan convent is of Gothic Moorish design. In the 18th and 19th centuries, wealthy Central and Northern Europeans discovered the scenic beauty, mild climate and hospitality of this region. World famous hotels were built and it soon attracted the stars of stage and screen. The old town has retained the atmosphere of bygone times. Where once Benedictines and Franciscans went about their holy duties, the holiday feeling is now celebrated in a splendid environment with all the Mediterranean flair that goes with it. Sorrento is famous for its music, so a visit to the Teatro Tasso is one of the highlights of our visit, as it's where the Sorrento Musicale is performed each night. There are songs and dances of the sea and of the marketplace. The main theme is love. Which is expressed by well-known songs. During the final public festival, the fiery Tarantella is danced late into the evening. Two hundred years of traditional music, dance and customs captivate the audience. Until the end of the 19th century, the Amalfi Coast was mainly accessible from the sea but later a road was built. The Amalfitana is around 25 miles long with many sharp curves and often seems to hover above the sea. Truly amazing. Steep cliffs, tiny bays, terraces with vines and lemon trees and an interesting array of buildings Thank you. 
Since its completion in the middle of the 19th century, this adventurous coastal road has become the region's lifeline and allowed tourism to develop. Next, Positano, with steep slopes and colorful buildings. The mountains go right down to the shoreline. A Madonna surveys a small sheltered bay in which there's little room for habitation. Towards the end of the 1950s, this then little known place was discovered by tourism in the form of artists and hippies. In between the Santa Maria Assunta Church, with its campanile and various buildings, there's a striking relief of a sea monster. The small town was once dominated by a monastery, and its flourishing maritime trade was in competition with that of Amalfi. Next came the strict feudal system of the Aragons, pirate hostilities, and the plague. Positano became less important, a forgotten place on this rocky coastline. Seen from the beach, the church dome that is decorated with majolica tiles rises above the closely packed buildings. Picture postcard perfect. According to tradition, it may have been freed Roman slaves who could have given Positano its name when the inhabitants of Paestum sought refuge here. They came here to escape the raids of the Saracens. The pink and white buildings look as though they've been stacked one on top of the other and appear from a distance like curious faces. The small sandy beach in the bay is packed full of restaurants. And just beyond the first buildings is a whitewashed maze of alleys and steps, steep but full of character. Wherever one looks, the scenery is just beautiful. Positano was for centuries a paradise for poets and dreamers. And even the intrusion of the jet set was not able to destroy its original character. Between Sorrento and Vietri sul Mare, the coastal road winds along mountain slopes. A dream road between both sea and sky. Here, nature is a true work of art, always something new to see. Extreme curves, sharp rock forms, and dramatic coastal slopes. Often the road is quite precarious, the first road to be built here was started by the Bourbons. In the middle of the 19th century, the ruler of Naples made himself responsible for the progress of the region's infrastructure. With its central San Gennaro church, the small village of Praiano contains much authentic atmosphere and romance. It was founded by a number of wealthy families from Amalfi who settled here. The 
relatively large church lies well protected below the coastal road. The ornately tiled courtyard is popular with the locals and has stunning views, as well as the eternal blessing of their patron saint. Life here was and is determined by a deep Catholic faith. The interior indicates the wealth of past times, with no Baroque excess, only well thought out design. Here the Doge of Amalfi once prayed as he chose Priano as his summer residence. A secluded and tranquil place, at that time only accessible by sea. The buildings were constructed on the craggy cliffs of Capo Sotile, and the coastline has a fjord-like shape. For centuries, this coast was cut off and forgotten by the world. At each and every turn, there's something new to see. This wild coastal landscape does not easily lend itself to human habitation. Only in the early morning or late evening is this panoramic road along the Costiera Amalfitana relatively free of traffic. Clearly, the region has developed according to its history. This road has been well incorporated within its structure. Amalfi, beating heart of the coast, today a world famous resort, squeezed into the mouth of a valley of mills. In the Middle Ages, Amalfi, along with Pisa, Genoa and Venice, was one of Italy's most powerful maritime republics, and its prosperity showed. Following the decline of the Roman Empire, the city was the first to successfully restore trade between East and West. A steep staircase of 57 steps leads up to the cathedral's atrium, which together with its campanile is located in a small main square. The cathedral also contains an early Christian basilica, A Byzantine bronze door made in Constantinople survived a devastating earthquake in 1881 unscathed. The cloister of the Duomo St. Andrea was built in the 13th century and between its Arabian Spanish pillars contains Amalfi's past aristocracy. The remains of holy martyr Andreas lie in the crypt. The interior of the dome is of Baroque design and this lavish decoration, a gilded wooden ceiling, numerous oil paintings and colourful marble walls. Magnificent art of the early 18th century. Tourists visit the town throughout the year. In 
Its few narrow streets are crowded and the shops have adapted themselves well to the needs of modern-day holidaymakers. Tourism brings in a healthy income here. Tsunamis and pirate raids that ended the Golden Age are now a thing of the past. And this forgotten coast has now been well and truly rediscovered. In the Middle Ages, Amalfi was also a major center of paper making. An old mill is testament to its production. And there's a display of photographs and paper patterns. The Valle de Molini that leads up to the mountains was once the location of several water-powered paper mills that manufactured what was then and is today an essential product. A path leads through lemon groves and vegetable gardens, higher and higher. It takes some time before the view back to the valley and Amalfi disappears. There's the aromatic scent of flowers and fruit, and a sense of calm in contrast to all the hustle and bustle of the town below. The ruins of the once hectic and noisy paper mills are now a distant memory compared to the tranquility of this place as it is today. Residues of cotton were milled in large stone troughs of water, which after much working resulted in a pulp. Next, the pulp was moved into a vat and filtered by way of a metal grill. Then, the leaves of paper were dried and pressed. Now, a tiny mill stream is all that moves here. above the coast is Ravello that in the 9th century belonged to the League of Cities of the Amalfi Republic and served as a defense against the Normans. It boasted 12 churches plus various convents and palaces in medieval Moorish architecture that highlighted a glorious era of luxury and wealth. The cathedral was founded by Benedictine monk Orso Papigo at the end of the 11th century. And its piazza became a comfortable meeting place for gourmets. Later, rich merchant families had their sumptuous villas built here. However, the families gradually faded away and the mountain town became depopulated. Until it was later rediscovered by artists and writers in the Romantic era. English artist William Turner was one of the first to move to Ravello and his fine landscapes unleashed a strong passion for this special region. The natural beauty of the mountain town and the splendid ambience of a fashionable summer resort make this architectural treasure unique. Externally, most of the villas and palaces look rather modest, almost completely hidden behind garden walls.
the townscape has largely been preserved and while strolling through the narrow streets, it's almost like traveling back in time. Stone gateways with coats of arms and medieval gardens add to this feeling. And buildings such as the Palazzo Sasso make it all seem so vivid, even though it was rebuilt within a luxurious hotel. When Richard Wagner came here, burnt out and tired, Ravello's magic inspired his Parseval. The city is a monument, a fairy tale under the southern sun. One of the most beautiful streets in the world winds along 40 kilometers of the Amalfi Coast and contains an abundant array of wonderful scenery. Technically known as the SS163, this road is quite an experience and becomes a dreamy adventure. On the 7th of September 1997, the Costiera Amalfitana region was designated as a UNESCO cultural heritage site. The same road connects many gems of both nature and culture. The picturesque town of Sithra is a typical fishing village. With fishing boats in its small harbour and the strong smell of fish. Its name is derived from Citarius, the Latin word for tuna. The fishermen here go to sea late at night as they have done for centuries. At the center of the city is the domed church of San Pietro, nestling between the buildings and the narrow streets. Cetera was once located on the eastern border of the Maritime Republic of Amalfi and was therefore often threatened by attack. The area was ruled by the Lombards, who chose Salerno as their capital. According to ancient chronicles, Cetera was twice occupied by Arab nations in 879 AD by the Saracens, and in 1551 by the Turks. Maiore Cava de Torini was its seat of government. In 1883 it became independent and peace prevailed. The final section of the road leads to Vietri sul Mare, the southern end of the Amalfitana, a symbiosis of both sea views and coastline. Thankfully, for several generations, the Costa d'Amalfi has further developed into a magnificent landscape with English garden architecture, Greco-Roman elements and Arabian Mediterranean flair steep cliffs and a breathtaking route until we arrive at Vietre sul Mare. This is our final destination and since Etruscan times has been known as the city of ceramics.